It's lunchtime, I'm hungry. You're probably hungry. I'm craving a burger. I'm gonna make a burger, I'm gonna eat a burger. So I'm gonna show you how I make my lunchtime cheeseburger. Now, you may be surprised to know that I don't actually put my burger on a bun, but I am using these little zero carb wraps. I'm telling you, you're going to be pleasantly surprised because I don't like to get tired and bread makes me tired, especially with a half pound burger on it, right? What I like to use in my lunchtime burger is simple. Certified Angus 80-20 ground beef, Duke's mayo, Dijon mustard, and thick bacon. A cheeseburger isn't a cheeseburger without American cheese. First thing I wanna do is preheat my, my pan on medium heat so that I can toast my wraps. I like them crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. That's just how I like to do them. You're welcome to do a bun if you'd rather have a bun. I'm all good with that, you do you. So we're going to crisp up our wraps and then we're gonna cook our bacon in the same pan. Then we're gonna wipe out the bacon grease from the pan and then we're gonna cook our burger and then we're all ready to go. Let's go ahead and make our burger. Now, an important thing to have in your kitchen is a kitchen scale. I know it sounds crazy, you can just eyeball it if you want to, but when I'm dealing with a lot of meat, I like to just make sure that I have the right amount because I portion things out. That's just the way I like to do things. So we're gonna go with an eight ounce burger, which is dun, 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 half a pound. There we go, 8.01 is good with me. Now, if you don't have a burger press, don't worry. You can definitely make your burger by hand. It's not hard to do. What I like to do is form a nice tight burger ball, high and tight, right? Smash it in your hands. I'm looking at my camera monitor so that I can make sure everything stays in focus for y'all. Smash in your hands again, and when you get little breaks in it, just form it back together, no big deal. So smash it again, and what I'm looking for is about a half inch to three quarters of an inch of a patty. And when you're dealing with a half pound burger, a half inch to three quarter inch is great. You're gonna get a great sear on both sides, and you're gonna get an even cook throughout. And that is what we're looking at right there. That is a patty formed by hand. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Now say you're using a burger press. This is the one that I like to use, it's cheap, it's easy to use. You can rip out burgers real easily. Plop it in there. I'll link to it in the description if you guys wanna pick one up for yourselves. And just smashy. And I'll tell you why they like this burger press so much. And then just take it right out. And there we go, a perfectly formed burger. It's got this ever important divot in the middle and the lines in it. And what that does, it, it keeps the burger from puffing up in the middle. And now you can obviously do that with your hands too if you wanna make a hand, a hand press burger. Just take your little meaty thumb and push in the center of it to create that divot yourself. Easily done yourself. Now we gotta get cooking. We're gonna start with avocado oil. You know your oil's ready when it starts to shimmer and it just slides throughout the pan like water. Carefully put your tortillas in the oil and just let them fry up. Now I only do it on one side. Why? Because I like the texture difference from the crunchy outside to the soft inside. This is a hex clad pan. These are metal utensil safe. I've had them for years and we're already crisping up. They like to puff in the middle. So you wanna lift them and press them down. Take the plate that you're gonna eat your burger off of so you're not creating a ton of dirty dishes and take your, and put your wraps right on there just so that the oil dries up. And we're also going to take our bacon and lay it on this side of the paper towel so that that soaks up all the bacon grease. That's the level of crispiness that we're looking for. Now, before you throw your bacon in here, go ahead and dump out this oil. We don't need it anymore. You can wipe it out with a paper towel if you like, or you can just set it aside and then just toss later. I just combine the bacon grease in whatever unused oil. So be careful when you lay your bacon in. You're welcome to add as much bacon as you want. I'm just doing one piece, because like I said, I have the rest of the workday to go through and daddy don't want to fall asleep at his desk. Okay, now I flip multiple times and I continuously move my bacon around in the pan just so that we get an even cook and we don't get a burnt center and a raw outside. That's kind of a pain. Now you could always bake it too, but that's another dish and another step and it's lunchtime and I want quick. So I'm using in the same pan for everything. And you can tell we're starting to get a nice golden brown right throughout. All right, we're almost there. There we go. I'm gonna give it 15 more seconds. Now, same bowl that we put the excess oil in, I'm dumping the bacon. I'm having a little too tight to the edge of the stove there. Okay, now carefully just wipe out the excess with your paper towel. Remove from the heat just for a second while we go get our burger ready. Now, while our pan is cooling because it was a little too hot, I grab a piece of tin foil. I get my spatula, or you can use the fork that we we're already using. I like to use a spatula. I go ahead and salt the first side. That looks great. We don't need to add oil to our pan because we're using 80-20 ground beef. And now I do salted side down first and that's the side with the divot. And now I salt this side. Now you could absolutely use cast iron for this, but this pan is dishwasher safe. So I can just throw this right into my dishwasher and just walk out the dough and eat. After it sears for about 30 seconds, lay your piece of tin foil loosely over the burger because we want to 
develop a crust underneath, but kind of add a little bit of steam element as well. While our burger's cooking, I'm gonna add my mayo. I like to put my condiments on the bottom side of this burger, and then I put the bacon right on the condiments so the bacon sticks and won't slide out when I bite it. And my Dijon. Adds a little bit of tang to go along with the savoriness of the mayonnaise. I break my bacon in two, and then I just place the bacon. Like I said, if you want more bacon, feel free to add more bacon. And now, see what the steam has done to the burger? It's made a lot of juice and kind of steamed the rest of it. And now, we've got a lovely crust on the bottom side. And I'm gonna let this cook on this first side for about 30 seconds, and then I'm gonna add my cheese. I particularly like the deli style of American cheese. It's less of a waxy. Place the first piece, place the second piece, so that we get our angles, and then we add the tinfoil. You could use a top to the pan if you want to. That's another dish. Now, I didn't add water to my pan, because that creates a splattery mess when you do inside. The tin foil and the steam, has perfectly melted my cheese, and this burger is done. Now, I like to take my burger and let it rest for just a couple minutes before I put it on my wrap or bun, if I'm using a bun, and just let it rest on that tin foil just for a couple minutes to let the juices soak back in. Okay, now that rest gave me the perfect amount of time to set up my cameras back up on the other side of the kitchen. That is beautifully done. Now, the last thing I'm gonna add are a couple pickles for some acidity. I like to go three. And there we go. There's my lunchtime burger. Should I slice it open for you? Beautifully done, so juicy. Perfect crust on each side of the burger. Let's take a bite. Oh man, it's so juicy. Mm. Oh my goodness. That layer of crust adds the perfect amount of crunch and flavor. You gotta take a bite of this. Oh man, that is so hard to beat. You get a good burger at a restaurant, I'm not saying you can't, but bake this burger for the price that it costs and have this much flavor in it and be so simple. There's gloriousness in the simplicity of life and a great cheeseburger is the embodiment of that, sim of that great simplicity. So I hope you've enjoyed my lunchtime cheeseburger. As always, I appreciate you. I'll see you next time. All right, I'm gonna go to my desk and edit this video. <laughs> while I eat this cheeseburger. Mm.